Hey guys, how's it going? In this video we're going to look at electrical potential, also known as electrostatic potential. So let's get started. We'll start with the definition of electrical potential, which is a common one that you could be asked to state in an exam. It says the electrical potential at a point is the work done in moving unit positive charge from infinity to that point. And to help you visualise this definition, here's a little simulation. So imagine we've got a point charge of plus 10 coulombs here, and we've got another small point charge of plus 1 coulombs at infinity away from that. So it's a very large distance away from it. And then we can see what happens when we bring this positive point charge close to our bigger charge of plus 10 coulombs. So you'll notice first of all that the plus 1 coulomb charge when it's at infinity means we have a work done of 0 gigajoules. However, if I bring the charge closer and closer to my larger charge of plus 10 coulombs, you'll notice that the work done increases. So we're saying that electrical potential at a point is the work done in bringing unit charge from infinity to that point. So you'll notice we have a positive work done when these two charges are positive and are repulsive. However, if we change this to a negative charge and bring the charge close again, we now have an increasing work done. However, it's going to be negative. If we put our definition into symbol form, we have our electrical potential or electrostatic potential V is equal to the work done W divided by the charge Q. So it's the work done in moving unit positive charge from infinity to that point. So we have V equals W over Q, and we can rearrange this to get this equation here, W equals QV. And this is one that you might remember from the higher physics course, where we looked at forces on charged particles, where W is the work done measured in joules, Q is charge measured in coulombs, and V is electrical potential measured in volts, or joules per coulomb. And you can see that we get joules per coulomb when you look at this form of the equation for 1 volt equals 1 joule divided by coulombs. It goes on to say that for a radial field, the electrical potential at a distance from a point charge plus Q is given by this expression here, V equals Q over 4 pi epsilon naught R, where V is electrical potential measured in volts, or joules per coulomb, Q is charge measured in coulombs, Epsilon naught is a constant called the permittivity of free space, and we've seen this value before, 8.85 times 10 to the minus 12 farads per meter, and R is the distance from the point charge to the point of interest, measured in meters. Firstly, notice how similar this expression is to the electric field strength in a radial field around a point charge, which was this one here, E equals Q over 4 pi epsilon naught R squared, and this was a vector quantity, remember. However, we don't have a squared term in the bottom anymore, just R, and this is now a scalar. So we've got a few things to note here. Firstly, a potential exists at a point a distance R from a point charge, but for the system to have energy, a charge must reside at the point. Thus, one isolated charge has no electrical potential energy, so a charge on its own will have no electrical potential energy. The electrical potential V will either be positive or negative, depending on the charge Q. V is positive when Q is positive and the force is repulsive, and negative when Q is negative and the force is attractive. Lastly, electrical potential is a scalar quantity, like we said earlier. If a number of charges lie close to one another, the potential at a given point is the scalar sum of all the potentials at that point. This is unlike the situation with electric field strength. So if you have several charges near each other and you're calculating the electrical potential at a point due to those charges separately, then you need to add them together as a scalar sum rather than as vector quantities. Next we have a graph of the electrical potential around a charge conducting sphere. So we have electrical potential V on the y-axis against distance R away from the charge conducting sphere on the x-axis. And you'll notice that we have the radius at this point here. So you should be able to see that inside the sphere we have this constant value of electrical potential V and it's non-zero. So it's this non-zero constant value of electrical potential inside the charge conducting sphere. And at the radius, i.e. on the surface of the charge sphere, it's also going to be the same as inside the sphere. However, as you get further and further away from the charge sphere, the electrical potential will drop off. But notice how it won't drop off as quickly as the graph for electric field strength. And that is because we've only got V is proportional to 1 over R here, rather than 1 over R squared. So this is not an inverse square law, it's just an inverse law. So it says here that inside the sphere, the electrical potential is a constant non-zero value. This is the same potential as all points on the surface of the sphere. So that is shown by this straight line here. It then says outside the sphere, the potential varies as the inverse of the distance from the sphere, i.e. V is proportional to 1 over R. So this is shown by this curve here, V is proportional to 1 over R. It then says to compare this graph with the one for electric field seen earlier. So here's our graph for electrical potential against distance R, and here's our graph for electric field strength against distance R. So remember, inside a conductor, the electric field strength is zero, but it's maximum on the surface, and then it will drop off quickly with distance. 
Whereas for electrical potential, we have this non-zero value inside the charge, and then the electrical potential starts to drop off with distance, but not as rapidly as the electric field strength. Lastly, it says to note that electrical potential is often referred to as electrostatic potential. It just means the same thing, and I've already mentioned that before. That's all for this video, folks. Thanks for watching. If you made it to the end, I really appreciate it. Make sure to give the video a thumbs up, subscribe to the channel, and I'll see you in the next one. Take care.